Hello, my name is Shalanda Chaudhary, and in this video, I'll be explaining about service endpoints, private endpoints, and the private links. So let's start. By default, the services like Azure Storage, Key Vault use the public IP for any connection from the Azure as well as the internet. So when the virtual machine in the private subnet connects to these services, they are accessed using the public IP over the internet. Now that's a problem for most of the organization as no one wants to transfer the data over the internet. And this is one of the reasons Azure introduced service endpoints. So the service endpoints are created while creating the virtual network itself. And they use the Azure backbone network for connecting the services. So now when a virtual machine tries to connect to Azure storage or the key vault service, the data flows within the Azure network itself, which means it's safe and secure. The only problem here is that even after using the service endpoint, services like Azure Storage, Key Vault, Event Hubs still use the public IP in the backend. And to overcome this problem, Microsoft introduced private endpoints, which means whenever a private endpoint is created for a service like Azure Storage, a NIC card is deployed within the subnet itself where the private endpoint is created. This way now, now Azure services like Azure Storage, Key Vault service becomes the part of your own network and all the connectivity from the virtual machine to the Azure Storage is within the Azure network and no public IP is used in this case. So hence the problem which we were facing in the service endpoint is now overcome in, by this solution. There are a lot of services which supports private endpoint. Uh, as you can see on your screen, like Azure Storage, Key Vault, SQL Database, Service Bus, App Service, and you can find the list of all the services in the Azure documentation. So now let's assume we have two different subscription and we want to connect our virtual machine privately using the Azure network itself. So in that case, we can't use the private endpoint because private endpoint only works with platform as a service. So we have two options now. One is to create a VPN connection between two different virtual networks. But in that case, the whole virtual network will be able to communicate with each other, which we don't want because we want only the few application or the virtual machine to talk to each other. The best suited approach for this scenario is to use the private link service, which can be used with the virtual machines too. So it, it supports infrastructure as a service. In fact, the private endpoints in the backend use the private link itself. Okay, so to expose the specific virtual machines using the private link service, we need to create a load balancer, which will load balance the virtual machine and a NAT gateway, which will take care of the netting. Because these virtual machines have private IP and we want the netting to take place because they are going to connect to the different subscription privately. Once private link service is set up, then different private endpoint connections can be created for the other network. So as you can see on your screen for subscription A, we have created the private link service. Now to link the subscription A with another subscription or another virtual network, we have to create different private endpoint connections. So you can create multiple private endpoint connection and the virtual machines in that particular subnet can connect to these virtual machines and all the traffic will go through the Azure network itself and that will be a private connection. So hence private endpoint and the private link are the services which are more secure as compared to the service endpoint. In most of the scenarios, private endpoint can be used, but in specific scenarios like the virtual machine infrastructure as a service, in those cases, we have to use the private link service. Let's cover the pricing for these services. If you're going to use the service endpoint, there is no additional cost for them. All the data transferred through the Azure backbone network is free. In case of the private endpoint, there is an hourly charge along with the amount of data which is processed through them, whether it's inbound or the unbound. As you can see on your screen, there is a hourly charge mentioned, inbound data processing cost mentioned, as well as outbound data processing cost. And this cost is in Australian dollar and the location is Australia East. And finally, there is no specific cost for using the private link service. But when we use the private link service, we use different other services like 
NAT gateway, load balancer, and we create multiple private endpoint connection. And as you can see, the private endpoint is charged hourly as well as the data processing cost is included in that. So we can say that private endpoint is not a free service like the service endpoint and it incurs charges. So as it's mentioned in the title of the video, I'm covering only the theory part in this video and I'll make a second video uh, with a demo of all these services. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.